Hello everybody, my name is Neil and today I am back for you with another installment in my Hammer tutorial series. It is one of my most popular series on my channel. It's very much requested, so I thought I'd just you know, sit down and record another episode for you. Hope you appreciate that. Anyways, today's topic is a pretty cool kind of optional technique that you don't have to use, but you can use if you feel like it and if you like what you see here. And the name of that technique is instancing. And it has two main um, fields where you can employ it. And uh, I will present to you both fields right now. So here I have prepared a little map. Um, it's just a little kind of segment of a map here just for this tutorial and if you're wondering why the hell does this thing look like puke? It's not your monitor. It's not YouTube. It's not my recording. It is the way it is supposed to be and this is because this level has been built with what's called instances. This actual geometry, okay, the walls, if you can see that, this displacement, everything, this little hallway, that's all instanced. So that geometry doesn't actually exist in this map. I cannot select this geometry. I cannot. You can see I'm clicking, it's not working. It, it selects and highlights an entire part of the map and that's what's called instancing. So essentially all those areas are different individual maps that this map here just uses. So it's just pointing to another map file and another map file and another map file to make itself as a map, if that makes any sense to you. So essentially what we have here is three maps. This is what I call um, bombsite A. Now, this could be a bombsite, I don't know, it's not a real map, but let's just call this whatever. So I called it bombsite A. That's this little room here. We've got our hallway right here. So I call this hallway and we have a third instance and that's a garden area and we can see this is all a little open area here. Okay, so let's check those out. So I just go to file open and I'll go and navigate to my CSGO maps folder and then tutorials and here I have DE tutorial. That is the map that we are seeing right now. That's, you know, that could be your DE spice, your DE whatever. Okay. But then we also have these individual maps right here. Uh, that's bombsite A, garden and hallway. Let's open the bombsite A. Oh, look at this. This is a real map. Okay. So now I can go ahead and I can mess with some of these. There's a group here. There's a couple of brushes here. There's a displacement down there and stuff like that. So now we can actually go ahead and modify the map. But look at this. It's open. That will be a leak. Well, it turns out it's okay for instances to have leaks. This map is like this is never going to be compiled. If I was going to try to compile this, there would be a leak. There's no player spawn, nothing. There's no lights, nothing. So that wouldn't work. But the fact is we're just using this map file just to be able to go ahead in our actual tutorial map right here to basically um, reference it. And the way you do this is like so. You click the entity tool, just put down an entity. I put it down right here as just a new entity, alt and return. And I'm going to turn this into, an f into a funk instance, just like that. And all you need to really do is check out this FMV file name. This is where you tell this entity what file, which map file it's going to become. You can hit browse, but that doesn't really work. Let's say I want to make another hallway. I double click, it doesn't happen, so this doesn't work. What you do, you just look at the file name hallway.vmf, just copy that, cancel, paste it in here, hit apply, and then it kind of kind of goes black for a second, but it'll come back. And now you can see what we have here is another hallway. But this hallway is an instance. It doesn't actually exist. It's just this little entity down here. Oops, just accidentally made another one. There we go. It's just that little entity. So that's, why is that cool? Well, that's cool because it allows us to organize our map into different sub maps, okay? Into, into little maps, little segments. So you can use this to make your bomb sites different maps. You can use this to make your spawns different maps. Your mid could be a different map. Each connector could be a different map. And the reason why that's so useful is for organization. 
because as the maker of DE Spice, I can tell you a full-scale CSGO map is big. It's always going to become a little bit of a mess. And sometimes you just want to change a little thing and it's just awkward to do because you've got thousands and thousands of lines and vertices and, and brushes. And um, while you can still deal with that if you're you know, efficient, an efficient worker in Hammer and you use your vis groups right here and everything correctly, it's always still going to be a mess. So if I just want to change something in this bomb site, check this out, this displacement, there is an error here. So let us just open the uh, bomb site, the actual map. And actually, here's a trick. If you do window tile, it will show you this. Then you just clear the messages and you hit window tile again so it doesn't do it with that window, which is useless. Um, then you get this view. And this is really cool because it shows you how easy it is to work with this. So I have both maps open. This is my DE tutorial map. This is where everything comes together. And this is my individual, just the bomb site A. So I can select this displacement. I can move it up if I feel like it. Just moved it up one notch. And I, I don't need to do anything. I just go into the other map and it's updated. Just, you know, with the snap of your fingers, magically it updates. That's really, really cool. Um, so this is the way that you can work with uh, instances in Hammer. And uh, now that you've seen this, I want to tell you that there's ups and downs to it. Upsides are it's easy to organize. Um, B, uh, well, actually the downside is it's also overhead. Okay, you need to make all these individual maps and you need to line them up correctly. So um, for lining up, there's a little trick here. I can show you this. Uh, this is the origin of the map. That's the center of the map for this little bombsite A map. That should be wherever you line it up because that is where the entity is going to be for this area. So right here is the entity. That is both the entity for this part and that the other part. And that is where the origin in the map file would be. So by using this, you can line up things easier. But still, the downside is it's going to be overhead to set up a map like this. But then again, it's making it easier in the end. So it's kind of a give and take thing. So this is not a strict recommendation. I'm just saying know that this exists and know that it is useful to some people. Make up your own mind uh, whether or not you want to use this. Also, I talked about two um, cases where you can use this. That was the first one. The first way to use instancing is to make your entire level. And again, that's kind of a thing. You don't need to do it, but you may want to do it, maybe. Um, I will personally do that in the future. But anyways, the second use is much better even. It's, it's something where I'd say everybody needs to do this. And in order to understand this, I'm going to actually open the hallway map. So this is the sub map, the mini map, so to speak, of just the hallway. As you can see, this is the hallway of the map and it's just that. But the thing is, and now it's going to get really crazy, it's all going to go instantception because we have instances in instances. Okay, you can do that. That works, which is mind boggling to me. I mean, it's, it blows my mind, literally. It's crazy. So this is a light source, but it's an instance. Why did I make this light source an instance? Well, because we have about 12 of them. There's six here and there's six over there and they're all equal. They're all the same, same, same light source. They are supposed to be equal. I didn't have to use instances, but if I didn't, and I wanted to change the spotlight that sits right here to be a bit brighter or a bit more red or a bit more orange or whatever, I would have to go through each and every single light. And it's very easy to miss one. It's very, very annoying. And then sometimes in maps, you can have an object appear, you know, 50 times or 30 times and not just 12. And at some point, it's just going to be unwieldy and you're not going to have a good time. So go ahead and make those things instances. I will show you. Here is light cone VMF, and that is just that prop static, and that is just that spotlight. And I can, you know, I could change the spotlight to be, you know, a different color if I felt like it, and it would update. I could go back to my hallway, and it would be updated. And then, of course, hallway is being used in the main map in DE tutorial. So these are instances in instances, and that's really cool. Um, I have a tip for you. The first tip I had for you was to go ahead 
and uh, make sure the origin lines up, right? Um, but the second tip I'm going to give you is that you should use this only in uh, one folder. So um, if you make a subfolder, some people make a subfolder called this instances and put their instance files in there. So that would be these. But that is going to give you trouble with the folders uh, being relative to the file name of the main map. Um, it's hard to explain right now and it's not that important, but I can tell you it's going to be a bit iffy. So I would suggest you don't do that. Why not put it all in one uh, folder. So, you know, in, you should have a CSGO map folder somewhere, make a folder for a new map project, and in that folder you can just save all the map files because there's nothing else in it anyways. So just do it like I did, it's all side by side, and then all you need to do, if I'm in tutorial, for example, and this would be the file, and I want to make an instance with a bomb site, I just type bomb site A. And if I want to put in the garden, I just put garden. And in the hallway, if I want to use the light cone, I just type light cone, and then it all works. So that is my sort of last and final tip. Now I am going to show you a little bit of footage here as well of me walking around in the map. All right, and there we are in the map. This is what this map looks like. As you can see, it compiles and looks absolutely fine. Works uh, with instances, looks just like a regular map. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, you know, make up your own mind, as I said. Do you want to use this? Do you not want to use this? Uh, it's valid not to use it. If you really don't like it, that's perfectly fine. I personally am going to use this for my future projects because I like the concept of being super tidy with your map and everything, having everything in a separate little file that you can just adapt very easily. And I will report back to you with how that goes when the time comes. A lot of people ask me, are you going to make another map? The answer is yes. The question is just when. And I cannot give you an exact date at this point as I'm super busy. Thank you very much for watching. As always, my name has been Nihil and bye bye. <laughs>